Hi, I'm Julia, and this is Barry. I got him when I was three, and he's always had a very comforting presence in my life. So, since this practice is all about reducing anxiety, I thought he might be able to comfort you too. So he's gonna hang out with us while we practice today. The other thing that you will need for today's practice is a bath towel. Go ahead and get a, a full-size bath towel. And you can also use this if you use a blanket when you practice. This will probably stand in for that. And um, if you use a block, you don't need a block. In this. If you're not normally a block person, you don't need a block for this. But if you normally are, you can use, if you use it on more of a high level, you can use a book, like a textbook or something. If you use it more on this level, your bath towel is probably actually just right. The original yoga mat was actually a carpet pad. So be resourceful. Let's get started. Come to a comfortable seated position. You can either bring your hands to heart center or you can bring your thumb and first fingers and bring them to your knees. Close your eyes. Oh, get a nice full deep breath. Really allowing yourself the luxury of filling your lungs all the way. The breath is a tool that is always available to you to calm you down at any time of the day. And these deep breaths like this calm your nervous system. If you've followed the newsletters for a while, you know what's going on with the breath. So focus, don't worry so much about technique. For today's class, we're more focused on the end goal, which is the anxiety relief. So really just focus on like it's as if that breath is sending calm to everything that it touches. So if there's something that specifically feels unsettled in you, send the breath there. Take your time with it. Be compassionate toward yourself. One thing we're going to focus on through the practice today is really feeling the sensations in your body. Really take your attention to how it feels to be in your body, how it feels to be breathing, how it feels to be supported by this nice firm ground underneath you. And observe your body if there's anywhere that's you know, uptight that you hadn't even realized. Send the breath there too. <clears throat> and remember what it feels like to breathe like this in a conscious, full way. Because the idea is to take that into the rest of the practice. And the more you can breathe, like the more quality your breath is through this practice, the better you'll feel at the end. And then you can keep your eyes closed or open them if you want. We're just going to get into the neck. And you don't have to do exactly the motions I'm doing. You're looking for the places in your neck that need to relax. You can keep that breath going. And also be aware of your face, of your jaw. Still aware of that firm ground beneath you, allowing you to relax even more because you don't need to support the ground. It's the other way around. That ground supports you. And then let's get into the wrists. And when I do my wrists, I try to get them from every angle. That's actually what we're going to do with a lot of the practice today. We're not going to be so concerned with exact straight yoga lines. We still want the alignment, but we're more interested in getting into all the angles of your muscles. So one of the ways that that works for me with wrists is I do this with my fingers. Like I stretch them out long and then I kind of like, as I'm rotating my wrists, I'm also doing my fingers. And then I also do my arms at different angles. So I'll bend my arms a little bit, I'll straighten them, I'll take them up a little bit and down, maybe sometimes facing up, sometimes facing down, sometimes facing back, and all the angles. And this is another good thing to do through the day. I do this often if I'm typing a lot. 
or if I'm practicing handstands a lot. <laughs> Even when I'm not practicing yoga, I'm still aware of my wrists. Also, if you have wrist issues with your yoga and you want some help on that, email me. Any questions you have, email me. Um, let's go ahead and take a, take a little twist. So left hand, right knee, engage your core gently. And we are not warmed up yet, up yet, so this is not supposed to be your deepest twist. This is just to get it, get it going. Switch your sides. And breathe. So sit up tall. Slouching in a twist doesn't work. Inhale and then exhale. Walk your fingers forward. If you're able to get your forehead to the mat, or if you have a block or a blanket or something, you can actually use your fists. It's really nice and calming to have your forehead on something that's touching the ground. It's just grounding. The frontal lobe right here of your brain is the part that tends to get overactive when you when you can't stop your mind. So this helps. I think of it like an off button. <laughs> like I'm pushing the off button on my brain and being like, okay, you're, that's not helping. <laughs> and keep your breath. Breathe into your lower back. And then bring it up and take your hands behind you. Palms facing front, hands behind you. And just open your shoulders, especially if you've been at your computer more than normal or if you've got kids at home and you've been playing with them on the floor or whatever's going on. Open up. And again, because right now we're more focused on getting getting the, the stress out, you can wiggle a little bit. And look, you're specifically looking for the angles that need to get stuff out. And keep your breath. And come on to all fours. And we'll take some cat cows. Same thing, you can go if you wanna, you know, take your hips a little left or right. If what's feeling grounding to you is specifically to not wiggle, you know, maybe if you're more of a fidgety type person, so what balances you out is to, to be very symmetrical in your movement, then do that. This is to serve you. Keep that feeling of the ground solid underneath you and pull your belly button to your spine as you tuck your toes and step into a down dog. And again, this is to get the, get the kinks out. So um, you can bend your, knee, bend your knees if you want. You can straighten one leg at a time. It's much, much better rather than being like, no, I want my, my legs straight, so I'm going to do it legs straight and then you aren't getting into your shoulders. Part of the point of down dog is to get into your shoulders. So, I mean, whatever you need to do to make that happen is what you want to do. <sighs> Breathe. Feel that ground. It's so solid under you and it feels so reassuring to have that solid ground. This is the reality. The ground is solid. Keep breathing. And then walk your feet up to your hands and slowly roll up. We're going to flow through some sun salutations. So, inhale, take your arms above your head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank or jump to chaturanga, your choice. If you're in plank, inhale. Exhale, you can bring your knees down if you want for chaturanga. Through into up dog. And back into down dog. Maintaining that core support through the whole thing. The core support is um, it's just the way your body is built. It, it makes it, it keeps the load from going all into your shoulders. And when we get stressed, a lot of times that's kind of the first thing to go when we start carrying the world on our shoulders and we, you know, slouch. Not only stressed, but if we're not feeling confident or whatever it might be. So that core engagement is just another good thing to check as a habit, as a way you carry yourself all through the day. And then bring your feet up to your hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand, bring your arms above your head. Exhale, hands back to heart center. Inhale, take it up. Exhale, come forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank or jump to chaturanga. If you're in plank, take an extra breath. Take your chaturanga, through into up dog, shoulders back, back 
and to down dog. So down dog is a very grounding pose. And I mean, in any pose you wanna think about this, but especially in a grounding pose, the things that are touching the ground, <laughs> which right now are your hands and feet, focus on that. So with your hands, they're not just haphazardly kind of here, just doing whatever. Press into especially your pointer fingers and your thumb and um, into your knuckles. And notice how it helps to kind of raise the palm of your hand. Like if there were a spider under there, it could keep crawling. <laughs> you wouldn't be crushing it. That's what you want. Those are your down dog hands. You can go show your dog. Hey dog, I have... Well, Never mind, that's weird. Dogs have paws. I don't even I don't know what I was thinking. Go ahead and put your, <laughs> bring your feet up to your hands. Your inhale, half lift. Again, if you need to wiggle, again, that's kind of more the point for this particular practice. Take it down and then up. A lot of times you practice yoga for the opposite of that, like to not be fidgeting and not be wiggling. Go ahead and take one more. Today, we have a different goal for today. Exhale forward, inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank, or straight to chaturanga. Go at your own pace, and we'll meet you back here. Checking for your neck, checking your jaw. Check your face. Have you smiled lately? Smiling is, is weird, like try it right now. It, you can feel it through your whole body. <laughs> And breathe that same breath that we had. Then bring your feet up to your hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand, take your arms above your head. And exhale, hands back to heart center. Inhale, take a big step back for warrior two. A lot of times beginners take too small of a step, so it'll be more like this and then the knees way over here. So if you're new, or not, but I mean, especially if you're new. Make sure you've got a good wide stance. You don't want your knee to go ahead of your ankle. And take your arms out, look over your shoulders, and breathe. This is a grounding pose. That same feeling, you've got the ground is solid for you, and you are solid in this. Center yourself, center your hips between your two feet. That way your front quad isn't doing all the work, and breathe. Shoulders, instead of letting them crawl up into your ears, shoulder blades down your back. Like you are, calm and collected. Again, you're using your core to support, not your, not your shoulders. Straighten your leg and switch. I mean, if you think about it, go ahead and take your warrior two. I don't know why we start putting our support in our shoulders when we're stressed, because this is not a logical place to, to carry the rest of our body. This, it's like, okay, yeah, if you support from here, then you've got support. Support needs to come from below. So on that note, the support for this pose especially comes from your feet. Keep your breath. Straighten your leg. Turn to face the front. Come onto your back toes and take it into a lunge. And the lunge actually, this actually prepares you for a back bend but it's all about the angle of your hips. So if, you're, if you think of your hips as a bowl, if you were pouring the bowl forward, you're not gonna get much into your hips. Think of it like you're trying to not spill water out of that bowl. Notice how all of a sudden now you're getting in right here. Straighten your leg and switch. And lunge. So how does this help back bends, you may ask? Because this doesn't look like a back bend to me. Well, look, I mean, if I were doing a back bend, it's a front, a back bend is a front body stretch, so it goes all the way down into here. So again, especially if you're focusing on the angle of your hips, it's gonna improve your back bends. Keep your breath. Straighten your leg, pivot back to the front, and step your back foot up to meet your front foot. Arms by your side. If you need more wrist stuff, if you need more neck stuff, take that liberty at any time while we're practicing today. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank or jump to chaturanga. Yogi's choice. Through into up dog. And back into down dog. 
Inhale, lift your right leg, point your toe, open your hip, bend your knee. Breathe into there. This is another good one. Like, if I've had a stressful day, this one always feels good. And you can kind of experiment a little bit. Move your knee a little bit. Maybe try taking your foot a little bit more or less over. Here, square your hips off and put it down. Find that spot where for you, it's stretching you out in a really quality way. Remember your breath that we practiced. Part of why we practiced that, so you can now use it. And remember that solid ground. Hmm. Square your hips off, put that foot down. Lift your right leg. And bring your knee to your nose. And straight. Bring your knee to your elbow. Belly button to your spine as you're doing this. Bring your knee to your other elbow. And straight. And put that foot down. Lift your other leg. And bring your knee to your nose. And straight to your left elbow, getting nice and tall and straight. And you who are more experienced, try to get as compact in these things as possible. Like really try to lift your leg as high as you can because it helps with arm balances. Breathe. And then come onto your knees and take your legs out in front of you. And slowly roll back. I forgot to mention, if you like to have music as you practice, you can put your own music on right now in the background. And then bring your hands behind your head, lace your fingers, and we're gonna do just a little bit to warm up your abs, wake up your abs. Using a muscle brings your body's attention to that muscle. And that's what we call waking up. And once it's been woken up, it also brings blood obviously to that muscle. And once it's been woken up, it's more useful to you through the practice. So I, I really like to do ab work towards the beginning of a practice, no matter what I'm doing with my practice, because having an awareness of your core, as I said earlier, helps you to support through the whole practice. It helps you to support more. Okay, so release and stretch out long like you just woke up in the morning. Uh, again, more just looking for the places that need the extra stretch. And then come up and back into a down dog. Lift your right leg. And we're going to do that same thing that we just did when I said be compact. So now you've woken up your abs. See if you can lift a little higher. And take it back. And lift. Take it to your other elbow and lift, and down, and switch. Inhale, bring it up, knee to your nose, and out, knee to your elbow, and out, and to your other elbow, and out. Lift your right leg. Now use that same technique, so try to keep your knee as close to your chest as possible as you step through. We're gonna step through to a lunge. If you're new, that is hard to do. So you can put your foot down and move it, <laughs> manually move it, um, and just know that it'll come. Turn your back foot 45 degrees, and then push into your feet, both of your feet, to give you stability as you come up into warrior one. And breathe. This is another grounding pose that just helps you feel your personal power. So keep that back leg straight, and once again, the things that are touching the floor, which are your feet right now, that's what you want to focus on for your foundation. So push into the, the ball of your foot on the right side, the ball of your foot on the left side, and, the, and your heel. Those three points help in both of your feet. Try it on your back foot too. Right here. Switch sides, and we'll try it on the other side. So back foot's a 45 degree angle, hips are square to the front. But yeah, push into your into those three parts on each of your feet. So the ball mound, they sometimes call it, it's like the um, ball of the foot under the big toe, the ball of the foot under the little toe, and then the heel for both of your feet. It slightly lifts the arch of your foot. 
and um, totally changes the pose, like because your foundation is different. Can bring it up and back, hands through heart center. Step to the back and lift your left leg. Step through. This time we're going to do warrior two. So turn your back foot parallel to the edge of the mat. Again, pay attention to your feet because that's what gives you support as you come up. The combo of your feet and your core. And then breathe. If you want to even open the hips, you know, work on your hips a little bit more, you can bend and straighten your leg. And then settle in. And as you focus on your feet, well, really in both of them, but that foundation in your feet, I don't know why I'm facing the backwards of you. <laughs> but anyway, the foundation in your feet helps to open your hips in both warrior one and warrior two. So do that ball mound thing that I talked about. Underneath your big toe, underneath your little toe. And your heel. Yeah, switch. Back foot parallel. We'll do that same thing where we warm up. <laughs> I promise I'm not turning my back on you, even though my back is turned to you. <laughs> Breathe. Oh, keep the breath full. Like when we did that luxury of breathing deep. Here, go ahead and take your pose. At the very beginning, do that now while you're practicing too. And get your ball mounds of your feet. Notice how all through your hips. That takes it more open through the whole entire thing. Breathe. Supporting with your core as well, which is a little harder to feel in this pose, but it's definitely still part of what you're doing. And then straighten your leg, pivot to face the front, and windmill back down into down dog. And walk it out. Even getting up into your toes. And then walk your hands back to your feet, and slowly roll up, belly button to your spine. Shoulders up, back and down. Let's take one more, just one more little Neck, wrist, you can even do ankles. I like to do ankles sometimes. Thing. Okay, we're going to do tree next. So come on to bring all the weight onto your right foot. And you can rest your foot here or take it all the way up wherever you like to go. And think of it as if your standing foot has roots growing into the, into the ground. And how, like, how roots are where they're just, you can grow your branches if you want. They're in that nice, the dirt. Like when you're gardening and you just get into that nice fertile soil, think of it as if you've got roots that just make you strong, growing down into nice fertile soil from the bottom of your foot. Even though that would be really, really gross and weird if that were actually real. For the purposes of this though, the, um, I mean, being in nature and being around gardening and grounding things is it's good for the soul. And it's, it's, a good stress relief. Like I said in that video, nature is not canceled and just syncing up with the rhythms of nature is a really good reset. Especially, I mean, modern life is so unnatural that I even, when I'm cooking and preparing food, I, I, that's like one of my ways of grounding too, is just connecting with like a straight up piece of food that hasn't been processed in any way, like a vegetable or a fruit. Um, so yeah, get connected with nature. We're gonna do warrior three now. All three of the warriors, they're all grounding and great. So um, keep all the weight on your right foot, take a big step forward with your left foot, arms above your head. Inhale, exhale, come forward. If you're new, you might come just a little bit. Full expression is right here. You can also modify with hands to heart center or out like airplane wings. If you're experienced, engage the muscles through both legs, but also this um, lifted one, and reach through the ball of your foot of the lifted one. If you're new, it's much better to, to stay straight or bring your hands like this than it is to be like, yeah, no, 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 see, I'm kind of doing it. It's like, nah. The idea is to incrementally build up to it. Go ahead and bring it back. Hands to heart. I'll finish that sentence in a second. This is one of my, I always do this when I'm teaching. I get talking and then it's like, we gotta switch poses. <laughs> so take it where you can do it with good form. 
and good form. If your arms are above your head, good form means you're in a nice straight line. If, like, you might not be able to keep your arms above your head, which is totally fine, but if that's the case, bring, bring your hands to heart center. And breathe. If you're experienced, pay attention to what's going on in your neck and shoulders. Keep your breath. Keep that core support. If you feel like you need to grab on with something because you're falling, grab on with your core. And then step to the back of your mat, arms above your head, bring it back and down by your side to Tadasana. Maybe get some wrists in there, a little bit more, maybe another wiggle. <laughs> and inhale, take a step out to the side, lace your fingers behind you like this. Inhale and exhale, bring it into forward fold. Keeping your breath nice and full. Rather than trying to force your shoulders open anymore, accept where they are and just enjoy, enjoy having that acceptance of yourself. Press into your feet. Again, those, that's your foundation. Use your core to come up and release. And in this one, it feels good right now. It's feeling good to even just make like little motions with my hips. It's said that emotions are stored in the hips, so it's nice to get that out, especially right now. I think a lot of what this crisis has done is it's like anything pre-existing that was already stressing you out, it seems like it's just bringing that up to the surface for everybody. And So there's other stuff that's been happening to you too besides just the crisis that you're having to still do, you know, like you would normally have to do. So let's just get it out. Breathe it out. <laughs> Okay, next you're gonna need a wall or you could be on your knees and use your couch or something. You just need something to push against. So, very. Um, you're gonna bring your hands with your fingers facing away to the wall and then keep your shoulder blades down, your shoulders open. So you don't want your shoulders tilted forward like that. You want them back like that. Inhale and then exhale. Turn your body so you feel a nice stretch through the front of your arm. And breathe. You can even take your neck with it if you want. Breathe. What I was saying about when we, when I stopped mid-sentence and we were doing Warrior Three, when you're new, go ahead and switch sides. I'm gonna make you wait for this. <laughs> so switch sides. When you're new, you want to be able to do everything right away, and. Um, some of it looks easy enough and so it's frustrating when it's like why can't I do that and honestly that's part of the lesson of yoga is learning to say here's where I am right now and if I come and I do this consistently I will progress results are guaranteed if you're consistent switch sides this time rather than um, straight we're gonna do a little bit at an angle so a little bit angled up inhale and exhale twist and breathe And then bring it back to the middle and we're going to go a little bit of an angle down. Again, if you're, if you're caving in on your shoulder, part of the point of this whole thing is to get your shoulder open like this. So instead of trying to protect yourself, you're confident. So take it like this. And my, my fingers are at a bit of an angle too. And breathe. But notice what we've done a lot is what I said at the beginning, we're, we're working lots of angles. Because when, when, when we're talking about stress, he likes to just lodge anywhere that it's allowed, like anywhere that it can. So we're like, uh-uh, out. Switch your sides. Do this if you want. Maybe do this a little bit. So, angle it up. But yeah, what I was saying about being new, and this, this applies to being experienced but actually progressing in something too, you have to step into those things that you're not good at yet. And you have to humble yourself when you're like, why? Can't I do that because I feel like I should be able to. Switch your sides, or switch the angle. But when you can accept where you are and you can accept the pace that you're gonna to have to take in order to learn, and you commit to the consistency rather than trying to make it happen all at once, it is so empowering. I'm gonna bring it back. And I will say, I learned that lesson partially from watching you all as a teacher. It was like, wow, people who get results, they just come all the time. 
and they're not like trying as hard as they possibly can you know, like to just nail this all in one shot, they're, they're coming and accepting where they are and starting from there. Okay, anyway, do this, and then grab your towel. You could use a strap. If you have a strap or a belt, you could use that too. But um, this, if you have ever dislocated your shoulders, I don't recommend this for this, for that. Um, you can just take a child's pose or redo that or whatever you want to do. But otherwise, this feels so good on the shoulders. So take it up. The wider your hands are, the, the less intense it is. So take your hands as wide as you need to. That's why I said you probably need a full-size towel. <laughs> I don't think a hand towel is going to work for most of us. And then take it back and breathe. My hands over now. Inhale up. One of the things about flexibility, and we're just going to do this a few times, it involves strength too. People think of flexibility as a very passive activity, almost like flexibility is the opposite of strength or something. Oh no. Pre like really pull this towel apart so that you're engaging your muscles at the same time. When your muscles are supported like that, then they relax more because they know that, you know, with good for good reason, they know that you're paying attention and um, that there's support there. So actually that's a common reason that people get injured is because they don't have enough strength and they do too much flexibility work and not enough, don't have enough strength. So yeah, pull with that. Okay, um, let's, let's work on some hips now. So, so first you can just notice how much better you feel. Like just take a moment to notice how much better you feel. This is within your power to do it any time. Um, so let's let's take it another step deeper now. You've done a lot with this. We've done some with hips, but we're going to do a little more with hips. So come to the front of your mat. Inhale, take your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank. Inhale. Exhale, chaturanga. Or to an up dog, you could also hold plank if you want to take it back. One more time, inhale, lift your leg and do this. Sometimes people like to do ankle rolls while they do this. You're just, you're the one in your body. Do what you want. Switch your sides. And you know what? That goes for whatever you need to do as you navigate this crisis. You are the one in your body with your mind, living your life. So what you need to do for you right now, do it. Like not in a selfish way, because that is your thing. When people use it as an excuse, you're like, okay, hold on. But I mean, whatever, whatever you need to do for you, your version of your stuff, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and lift your la, right leg, and this time step to the outside of your right hand. Come on to your knee, and or you can keep your legs straight. And, um, you can either stay in your hands or come down onto your elbows. I actually also like to use, I like doing this one with the block under my leg. Sometimes, I don't know why, I just like the way it feels, or block under my knee. So, for this one, we are stretching right in here, in your thigh. So again, whatever angle is, whatever angle serves you the best. Keeping that breath, and this time as you exhale, think of just release. That feeling of releasing, not just on the exhale, but releasing from your body, allowing your body to release. And then step back to down dog and breathe. Lift your right leg. I mean left leg. <laughs> Take it down. Man, that is not my strong point. Is getting right and left <laughs> getting right and left straight. Y'all who've taken my classes, we have the flashback moments right now. <laughs> Keep breathing. Another thing that can be nice to increase flexibility is pulsing your muscles a little like this. Like you wanna it's it's a technique. You can pulse your muscles a little bit and then um, Hold it for, you know, maybe pulse like eight or ten times, or even four times. Hold it for maybe ten seconds in the stretch, and then pulse it again. It's an option. You don't have to. The breath, though, that's not an option. The letting go, not optional. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> let go when you're ready to let go. And then step it back. Yeah. 
lift your left leg, I mean right leg, <laughs> see? Lift your right leg and bring your knee through for pigeon. So if you normally sit on the block, you can either use your block or possibly you can use your towel, which frankly I think is more comfortable than sitting on a block anyway for pigeon. So if you want to adjust to go deeper in pigeon, opening your leg more parallel to the edge of the mat is how you can get deeper into it. If you're already really flexible right here, open it more like this, it eventually leads to splits. So take your, take your theme. But if you are going to adjust, make sure you come to the side. Don't stay in the middle like this because that's not good for your knee. Anyway. Inhale and then exhale. Take it into pigeon. This is also another really good one for releasing. A good technique if you're if it's hard to relax, is to relax somewhere that's easier to relax. So maybe check your jaw, check your face, something that's kind of unrelated to the main muscles. It has a ripple effect, because the opposite is true too. Like if you tense up because something you're like, oh, um, it goes up into all, think about it, like all the way up into your jaw. So, and if your jaw's been tight, you could even, you could even massage that right now if you want to. But yeah, if you can relax there, then maybe you can start relaxing in your shoulders. And then you can get to the place where you can trust a little bit that like, okay, I'm going to be okay if I relax. Honestly, that's a good lesson right now. You're going to be okay if you relax. It's not going to change the state of anything in the world, you being uptight right now. You can't make it go away. So focus on the fact that the ground is still solid, like I said. As I said in that video, the big forces of nature are still happening in life. Nature is still happening. Like there's a lot of stuff that is still going that is sustaining life here on earth and focus on those things because that part is, that part is sure. I'm pretty sure the sun's going to rise tomorrow. I, I'm confident on that one actually. <laughs> Go ahead and bring it up. So focus on that stuff. Inhale and then exhale. Bend your knee and breathe. If you want to take it a little back, you can. And then straighten your leg and switch. One thing that took me a while to click on with yoga was that you can like put a good amount of weight in your hands when you're stepping back to down dog. It's not, it doesn't have to all happen in your feet. So if you're like, how do you move so smooth? Some of it is, it's like, there's a good balance of weight between hands and feet. Okay, let's do the other side. Left. <laughs> now I'm all like double checking myself before I say right or left. I'm having flashbacks if you're not, <laughs> if you've taken my classes. Okay, um, so same thing. Get yourself situated. Oh, one important thing for you who are new, keep your hips square. Um, the idea is not to be like this, like, see, look, I'm in the pose. If you're sitting on, like, mostly on one cheek, you're actually not supposed to do that. Um, this also helps with back bends because it's, it stretches this leg in that same place that needs to stretch for a back bend, like in camel and things like that. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Mm, check your jaw again. Remember what I said about being really aware of the sensations of what it feels like to be in your body right now. So, I don't know if you want to be hyper aware of the sensation. Like, when pigeon pose feels amazing, it feels amazing, and when it doesn't, it's like, okay, oh, this is intense. So, if it feels amazing, then enjoy and feel like, speaking of grounding, like your whole body right now is on the ground. So just enjoy being supported melting into that support. If you're like, mm, yeah, no, <laughs> that's not what this pose feels like to me. Um, if it's, if it's challenging, but it's not going to hurt you, then breathe through it. Focus on the breath rather than the discomfort. That is definitely a lesson I've learned from yoga. If you're like, I, I can't, <laughs> then back out a little bit. Grab your, grab your blanket, 
put it underneath you. Or actually, if you only need just like a smidge of support, I guess the book really would work really well for this. But yeah, don't make it so it's so easy you're not going to progress unless that's what you need from your practice right now. You don't have to progress in every single thing you do every single day. There's something to be said for sometimes not holding yourself to that. But you know what I'm saying. Go ahead and bring it up. And bend your back knee. And breathe. Think again about the shoulders. Like rather than collapsing forward, just open them. It's not doing any favors or good or anything to like slouch over all the time. It actually like collapses your lungs when you do that too. So just open. And be breath, breathe and be open. Yeah. So when I was talking about the graceful exit, you could put weight into your hands as well as your feet while you're stepping back. Having said that, if you're new, it just might not be graceful for a while and that is totally okay. Walk it out. Yeah, and then come onto your knees, come onto your elbows, come onto your belly. And we're gonna do a little bit of backbending, which is really, um, it's just refreshing. Backbends are refreshing. I love them so much. They stimulate your entire nervous system because that's your spine, you know, your nervous system. So bring your hands by your chest. Make sure your shoulders are back. Again, if they're caving forward, that's counter, counter to what backbends even do. Inhale and then lift. Just come up, maybe only here. If you want to come all the way up into full cobra. Breathe. Enjoy that stretch across the front of your body. And again, shoulders are open. So rather than collapsing like this, collapsing in your arms, keep your shoulders back. Think of it like you're trying to like prevent your lungs, lungs from being collapsed. And then lower and take your right ear to the mat, arms by, the, by your sides. Uh, breathe, your whole body's on the floor right now, the whole thing's supporting you. Melt into that support like you melt into the support of a loved one when they hug you and they're just there for you and you're like, oh, thank you. Melt into that with the ground right now. Breathe. Full breath like we had at the beginning. Then bring your eye gaze to the front. Bring your hands by your chest. Inhale, bring your belly button lightly to your spine as you come up. That's actually something I forgot to mention last time. Belly button to your spine supports your lower back and helps it get into your upper back, helps the back bend get into your upper back. Another way you can increase your back bends just a little in Cobra is to look over one shoulder, breathe, and come back. You can even maybe like go over there just briefly and back. Do the other side. And the reason that helps, and then back to the middle, is because it isolates some of the muscles a little bit more. Like you can stretch just the muscles that might be tight which for obvious reasons help the whole thing. Keep your breath. And then lower and take your other ear to the mat. And allow the floor to support you. One of my first yoga teachers used to say anytime your palms are facing up that you can think of it like you're receiving. And I love that. So think of it with your palms up right here like you're just receiving with open palms whatever you need right now. In abundance. And breathe. and then come back to the middle. I'm gonna do one more. So hands by your chest. This time open your legs uh, to the edges of your mat. Inhale, come up 
reach long as you come up and this time bend your knees and breathe so you can get in those quads and if you ever find yourself you're like ah, yeah, ah too much back off to where you can do it with composure to where it's like oh yeah it's stretching but it's composure that's actually some of your um go ahead and bring it out some of your development as a yogi come down and then sit back onto your heels we'll go into child's pose in a minute but i want to i want to twist first some of your development as a yogi is when you can get to where you're like oh yeah that's that's a stretch and but you have composure and breath the whole time where you're like nah, what i do when i feel that is i breathe like that's my response that's what you're training your body your nervous system to do and it really does translate to life it really does and it's such a cool feeling where you're like i am i'm staying calm right now and i'm proud of myself okay Right hand, left knee, other arm behind you. Support with your core so that it doesn't all go into your lower back. We want it in your upper back. And breathe. Hopefully this twist feels a little more open now than it did when we started. Keep breathing. Uh, and just allow you, like your whole self, to feel a little more open now than we did when we started. Luxuriate in that breath. You can go a little deeper on each exhale. But don't, go ahead and bring it back. Twists weren't the focus of today's practice, so you don't necessarily, inhale and exhale either way. You don't necessarily need to make it your goal to go into the deepest twist ever with every exhale. Unless you want to, if you are experienced with yoga and your body's like, can I go? <laughs> of course you can. But keep that core support. Keep a straight spine. Nice and tall. Get your head involved in the whole thing too. Your, <laughs> your head is the weight of a bowling ball, so if it's not in alignment. That's that puts stress on everything. Use your breath to deepen in. It's on the exhales. You can go a little deeper. And then gently come forward. When you've done something intense with your back, I mean we weren't super intense with the back, but just as a yoga hip, <laughs> get out of it slowly. Don't like snap out of it. <laughs> snap out of it. No, just kidding. Don't snap. Okay, we're going to come into child's pose. So inhale, uh, and exhale, bring it forward. And you can either have your hands, again, palms facing up, receiving what you need, or you can have them open like this, just feeling supported like all the way to your fingertips, feeling that support of the floor. Head on the floor, remember that whole off button thing for your frontal lobe of your brain. If you don't, if you can't reach the floor, you can put your head on your, maybe you have one block <laughs> or your book or something. You can stack your fists. That's great. Hmm. Check your jaw again. Keep your focus on the sensations of being supported, of being present, just right here, right now. That's a good lesson for this time right now. It's actually, it's a good exercise where you're like, you know what? I can't even plan for the next month, but I certainly can't really plan much beyond that, so it's good. So just be here right now. This is what you've got. Do not worry about tomorrow, but tomorrow will worry about itself. Just do today. And then bring it up. We're going to come on to our backs. And inhale and exhale, roll back. Mm, take a good long stretch. Mm, the kind of stretch you take when you just woke up in the morning. And then bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Uh, relax into the mat. Let yourself be settled through your stomach, your digestion, just be settled, be hugged. And then 
as you are relaxing into the mat, slowly rock from right to left. Kind of like you're rocking yourself to comfort yourself. If babies are smoothed by rocking, and babies are humans, <laughs> then you're probably smooth, soothed by rocking too. It's a soothing feeling. This is a really good one to do at any time because it this this rejuvenates your adrenals. You probably know the adrenals are glands that get tired when you're stressed all the time, or if you've been sick, or whatever. That feeling when you're feeling run down. If you if you're feeling run down, do this one because your adrenals are probably getting a little like oh, I'm trying. So this is a way to be like I know I know. Take care of you. I'll pay attention to you. I will listen to you. Body out. What? Tell me what you need. We'll do it. This is also right now during these times. Focus on healthy habits. You know, drink water. Eat healthy. Breathe. If you're a juicer, like if you juice, green juices are really nice. Makes you feel really fortified. Sometimes it can be tempting to be like, I just want to eat what I'm going to eat right now, you know, if you're stressed. But it's like, be present. Like, don't wait until the moment that you're stressed to be like, what am I going to eat? Like, think about it. Do some planning on it so that you can just really be there for yourself. Really support yourself right now. And then keep your right knee in. Extend your left leg out. Place your fingers and pull your knee into your Pull your knee in. This helps your digestion. Right now we're slightly blocking the blood flow to your ascending colon. So breathe deep into that squeeze. And focus, right now you're not, <laughs> you're not using your core right now. Focus on relaxing through your stomach. Really like, try to get to the absolute pit of your stomach and relax right in that place. Other knee in, hug them both. And again, you'll notice like, if you're like, I'm trying, I'm trying to relax, I just, ugh. This is just a good one, because it makes you feel hugged. I mean, you can give your own self a hug and just, now relax in the pit of your stomach, like squeeze, really squeeze. Breathe into the pit of your stomach. If your hips are tight, you're like, ugh, okay, yeah, that hurts my hips. Do what you can, remember what I said earlier, it takes time, it's okay. And switch. And you know, all of us, our bodies, now we're slightly, um, like, helping to stimulate the descending colon. When we release, it'll stimulate it. So bring it in. Um, oh, man. I forgot what I was going to say. Can we rewind? <laughs> so I can remember what I was going to say. I think I was going to encourage you again. Oh, I was just going to, if you are new and you're like, ah, this hurts. You look so relaxed and it hurts. Um, all of us have areas of our body that are tighter than others too. So don't like experience a couple poses where you're like, that was so hard and feel like ah, yoga is just too hard. It's like, eh, maybe that's just where for your body, that might've been tough for you. Also, all of us yoga teachers have biases towards our own bodies. So, you know, I mean, just so that you know what yoga is about. It's about accepting yourself where you are and, and um, meeting yourself where you are that day. Go ahead, one more time, one more time. Bring them both in and squeeze. So it's not about quote unquote how well you're doing. I would say it's about how well you're connecting with yourself. That's what it's about. One more good stretch. And then bend your knees so your feet are flat on the ground. Windshield wipe for your legs from right to left. Sometimes when I'm on my back, I like to keep my arms above my head like this because it makes me feel like I'm, I don't know, 16 years old, lying under a tree, honestly, without much of a care in the world, breathing. I love to lie under, like, lie in the grass under a tree. It's really nice to practice yoga there, too, so that could be a nice, nice thing, especially if you've got kids at home and you need to get them out of the house. Maybe go to a park and you can do this while they're doing that. <laughs> 
Um, okay, inhale, lift your hips and take them a little to the right, and then drop your knees to the left. Um, open your shoulder. Hold on. Why am I suddenly disoriented? Okay, open your sh knees are to the left, shoulders to the right. A couple different ways you can do this pose. Um, one is more where you're focused on your... I feel like I did this wrong. Why doesn't this not... Oh, oh, that's why <laughs> I did do it wrong. Stack your knees. Okay, yeah, that's a big difference. There we go. Stack your knees. Yeah, there's the stretch. So you can either focus on keeping your knees more stacked and your shoulder may come off the ground more, or you can focus on keeping your shoulder more on the ground and your knees may not be able to stack exactly. And you can also kind of experiment a little bit with how much of a right angle your knees are at. Breathe into it. So eye gaze is going to go towards your shoulder. Ugh. Just look for all, like anywhere through your whole body, or maybe you can relax a little more as you breathe. And then come back to the middle. Take your knees to the other side. Oh. Open. Also, palm facing down, oh, is it out of the frame? <laughs> palm facing down versus palm facing up may affect things. Just depends on your body, so you can try that. Maybe close your eyes, maybe smile a little bit and breathe. Back to the middle. Get your hips back into the right place. And then yogi's choice. You can either do legs up. I was going to say, like, well, you could do legs up the wall, especially right now. You probably have a wall and you probably have time. Maybe you have time. So maybe not. I do recognize it. Some of us, I'm definitely in this boat. Some of us are like busy as ever, if not more right now. So maybe you don't have time. <laughs> but if you do, you could do knees up the wall. Um, you could do shoulder stand. You could do happy baby if you want. It's nice to do something where your feet are above your head. Shoulder stand is especially good for you because it takes your organs upside down which they like. Uh, it takes blood to your head, your face, your brain. It's one of the reasons you feel refreshed after yoga is because you've gotten blood to your brain, like physically moved blood to your brain. And then you've also deep breathed the whole time, so you've got oxygen to your brain. Having a functional brain is definitely an easier way to go through the day. Even, even time-wise, like if it feels like you don't have time to take care of yourself, it's like, well, Maybe for a day or two, you can gain a little time by skipping your self-care, but man, <laughs> when that day comes where it catches up to you, or you're like, oh no, now I can't function. So it really doesn't save time to skip. Don't skip your yoga, don't skip your sleep, don't skip your healthy eating, don't skip your whatever you do, your spiritual practice. That stuff, you need that stuff. That is your support. Right. Okay, if there's anything else you want to do, you may do that now. Otherwise, let's settle in for a nice relaxation. Just rest. Give yourself that permission to rest. Let that ground support you. Yoga soothes your whole nervous system. It, it acts upon your nervous system. And we do a lot of work with the spine. And so the more you do yoga, the more you condition your body to be calm, not just on your mat. That's why when you are doing yoga regularly, you are just able to respond to life better. So try to remember this feeling so you can carry it throughout your day. If you're getting caught up in stuff and forgetting this feeling, maybe even take a snippet of what we did today and do that part again. 
whatever it is you're going through, I'm so sorry. I, um, yeah, just, just, I send you my love. And like I said, I'm here. If you, if you want to email me questions about yoga or support, I, um, yeah, I'm just sending you my love <laughs> from my heart to yours. Namaste. Oh yeah, Barry's sending you love too. <laughs> He's really good at it. And also just fun fact about this little guy, he was in an REO Speedwagon music video in 1984. Not him proper, but his little twin was. So I guess he's just a great bear. <laughs>